Um, next, we have um, Kate, Katerina, uh, who is uh, involved in the project. And she will talk about a little bit about your university in Austria. Thank you, Katerina. Well, can you hear me? Great. The, you no, okay. um, I'm, I decided not to have any PowerPoint slides, but just to talk. Um, so, good afternoon. Um, <laughs> Um, I would like to present something like a case study. What is the University of Vienna in Austria doing in terms of diversity policy, but also active diversity management? And I would like to give you an overview first of what the university is doing. And then I would like to give you one example. It was very hard to pick an example because obviously a lot of things are going on um, at the university, but um, I picked one. So. Um, just a few, um, a few words about the University of Vienna generally. We have 94,000 students. We are the largest university in Austria um, and 10,000 staff members. So uh, the machine is moving very slowly <laughs> generally, also in terms of diversity, but also in terms of other things. Um, anyway, so did we have a commitment to diversity in, in the university? Yes, we did, but it was very hard to convince the management level that things should actually be happening. So our vice rector, for she's, uh, she's responsible for teaching issues. Um, she's also responsible for diversity. And I remember a conversation with her some years ago. Um, she was not very convinced of diversity. She said, well, it's there. Why do we have to talk about it? So th there, there was not so much active commitment going on. Um, this has changed. She is committed now. Um, and it helped us very much with the initiatives that we have um, at the university generally. Um, now, to give you an overview, we have a diversity reporting system every two years, which is going on at the university. And we have a diversity platform which is uh, part of our website and everything is pulled together, um, research, uh, practical initiatives, uh, responsibilities, uh, tools, methods. So this diversity platform is, is active and it pulls together all information about diversity, which is a very good thing. Um, what else do we have? Um, a lot of initiatives and, and single activities focus around open access. So allowing minorities to access university in general, we have a lot of different things going on in this area, especially non-degree or non-credit uh, programs. One example is a very nice project. I think um, it's between uh, refugee pupils and refugee university students. They meet and they do homework together. Very nice, it's, it's organized um, by the university. They have a room, it happens once a week, and it's a very nice initiative, but, uh, initiative, but it's of course a non-degree, non-credit, it's a, a nice activity. Um, also, uh, in terms of training, we have uh, the HR department, and this is very similar to Mainz, actually, to what the president said before. Um, the HR department and gender and equality is uh, responsible also for diversity. This can be a good thing, but it can also be stigmatized. It's, it's yeah, we, we don't know. Um, anyway, uh, the HR department um, is now offering a course for administrative staff on diversity. It has four sessions and it's free free of charge and it's offered to all the 10,000 staff members of the university. You can register. It's offered on a regular basis. So things are really happening in this area of training as well. Um, and a process that brought us one step forward was a working group. It was a university wide working group on diversity and it was chaired by the vice rector. It took us two years to get this working group started. Um, <laughs> And uh, finally, it was very good that it took place because it went through all faculties and all hierarchies. So we had students in there, we had professors, we had different people from maths to educational sciences, all different faculties, and the vice rector, and the HR department, and so on. So all these people um, in, in general, I think we were about 20 to 25 people, 
we sat together for several sessions discussing how to, to bring diversity policy forward in our university. And because we, in our department, we had two projects, one here, um, about diversity, I was also part of this, part of this working group, which, which also shows that European projects do have an effect on, on the university. Anyway, uh, so the, the task of this working group was to write an anti-discrimination guideline together. This was very hard because uh, 25 people were supposed to write something um, and to, to agree on common terms and so on. Um, but in the end we succeeded and the vice rector said this is it, we want it and she promotes it as well. So a lot of things are, are going on in this area and now I would, well, one more thing maybe. Do we have a diversity monitoring? No. Um, do we know how these single activities mm, affect different student groups? No, we, we don't know. So, of course, we're also just on the way trying things, but um, we do not have a specific monitoring tool or anything. So. Yes, and now I would like to give you an example. Um, in all these um, different tasks, um, I picked one example uh, that I would like to present to you now. We launched uh, the very, very first um, degree program um, for refugee teachers in Austria. So um, our target group were um, teachers who, were, who had been teachers before in Syria, came to Austria but weren't allowed to work as teachers in, in Austria. And uh, we thought, well, they're academics and they are registered in the unemployment offices um, and they have no chance to work as teachers in Austria because of not rec no recognition of, of prior learning and so on. Um, so this is a target group for universities and we have to do something. So we asked the unemployment service just in Vienna, how many refugee teachers do you have in your database? And they said, well, more than 500, just for Vienna. And uh, that's why um, we started uh, to launch this program. Um, we uh, tried to get funding for it. We had a national integration fund, which had an open call for, for projects um, at that time. So we handed in an application and we got funding. Of course, the money was cut, but still. Um, and we also had uh, conversations with the unemployment offices, with schools and with different other stakeholders. It was a very long process, but in the end, um, it was possible to start this program. Um, and funding started in January 2017, so it's about two years ago. Um, in order to do this, we knew that the vice rector, again, would be a key person to support this initiative. And because our funding was cut, we needed um, money from the university as well. And we also knew that this was going to be something that the media would probably cover. So we needed the support of the vice rector. Um, so when the course started, um, we had something like an opening ceremony where the, the refugee teachers who had come from Syria and now started the course met the vice rector. Uh, and I have to say that this was a key element to the continuous support of the vice rector of the program because it was extremely emotional. Um, it was, we asked the students to, to cook cook traditional food and to, to, to come together in this opening ceremony. Um, and uh, she, she arrived and she doesn't really have a lot of time to spend with individual students. So it was very, um, it, it was an exception that she had time to, to talk to the students. Um, and she arrived there and she gave an opening speech and then we, we just ate together and the students were so they were so nice, they surrounded her and asked her all kinds of questions. Who are you and thank you for coming and thank you very much for, for initiating this program. And in, in that moment, an emotional attachment took place. She liked them, they liked her and something happened and she was just, she supported this initiative all the way through. She mentioned it in every single talk or conversation or meeting she had. It was amazing how, how she supported it. Um, yeah. 
anyway, uh, we had to run through um, a formal recognition process. We had to, to um, write a curriculum and we had to have the Senate approve of, of the curriculum. So it took us six months to actually be able to do this. Um, and in the end, we had over 100 applicants from um, refugee teachers who wanted to go through that program because it was the only program in Austria allowing teachers to work as teachers in their original profession. Um, and it's the only program, so we had over 100. Um, and we took 23 in the first course. So 23 people were able to, to go through this course. It lasted for a whole year. It's a full-time program. Um, it's five days a week. Two days a week, the refugee teachers were in, I, I would say, an internship in different schools. And three days a week, they were at university having classes and additional homework and additional German courses. So it was a full-time program. Um, in this year, they were, they were paid uh, by the unemployment service. They had a, um, I don't know how to, how to call it, but they had a, um, a minimum uh, wage by the unemployment service in order to, to be able to, to do the course. Um, that was one of the pre prerequisites that we had to talk about with our stakeholders before. And uh, I have to say they had I think three weeks of break in this whole year. It just went through the whole, the whole year. Um, but in the end, after finishing this year, they are now able to work as regular teachers in Austria. And all, th all 23 of them finished. Um, and uh, we had an extremely good media coverage. We were in the national television, we were in the radio. We had several newspapers write about this. And we had two official inquiries by the Austrian parliament. So this is the connection to policy, maybe. This doesn't happen very often, but it happens sometimes. So the, we had to answer two official inquiries where the members of the parliament asked us different questions about this initiative, and we had to answer them. Um, yes. So in June this year, the course ended, and we started a new course with 25 new refugee teachers um, last week, actually. Um, so we're going into the second round of doing this um, and you have the feeling that it's slow motion and it's only 23 people or 25 people but in the end um, these people were so thankful because they were able to work in their original profession which was not possible before and uh, yeah. Uh, what we also did was we, we launched a European project together with the University of Cologne in Germany and the University of Stockholm in Sweden because these two universities also have programs for refugee teachers and so far are the only ones we know um, in this area. And so we have a European project with them as well. And uh, now I'm coming to the end. Pat asked me to talk a little bit about the challenges in the end. So what were the challenges? Number one, um, working with stakeholders. We had, to, we had to talk a lot with stakeholders, with the unemployment offices, with schools, um, with uh, different people in the university, um, with, the, with the vice rector and so on. So that was a challenge. And I have to say that a lot of private time was dedicated to these 23 people. They needed a lot of time. And of course, staff members um, were employed to, to do this, but it was not enough. We were a circle of initiators. We were six people who initiated these, uh, this program and all of us took a lot of time to, to bring the group forward. Yes, for example, we had one woman um, who had a domestic violence problem and it came up in the year. So we had to move her to a women's shelter. This all happened in the private time of somebody. Yeah. And I have to say another challenge was a long way, it was a long way to establish the curriculum to do the formal process of being able to offer this program. Um, it took six months, but in the end, we're now impacting people. So it, it, that was good. Um, and yes, now uh, the first 23 people are in the phase of applying for jobs. So some of them already have jobs as teachers. Others are still in the application phase because after the summer they started to apply. 
And now we started the second round, so we are very happy that with um, this initiative, we're still, it's still the only initiative in Austria for, for refugee teachers. Um, and we hope that other universities take it up. And we hope also with the European project that we have now with Germany and Sweden, that also other countries take it up because I'm sure that not only in Vienna we have 500 unemployed refugee teacher, teachers, I'm sure that it's also the case in other countries. And yeah, so that was my example. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Very much.